Okay, good morning. Okay, baby, it's going to take my cars. I guess it's all day. Moscow's kitchen, Vanguard's kitchen. My spiritual name is Black Horse. I'm from the Eagle Clan. I'm blue hair and wear, noble spirit. And my birth name is Michelle Gagne. And I'm the cultural outreach worker here at Yavin. And uh, this morning we're going to be making a video on how to create your turtle shell rattle. Um, I'm going to go as slow as I can. You know, uh, and explain uh, as we go on the process. For all the people that you know got to, uh, that signed up for the kits, uh, we pre-cut and we punched holes and cut out the material. We went get the sticks. Uh, we went cut out the leather for for each. Uh, person who signed up and for me to to do this on camera is a little it's a little bit overwhelming because I like doing this in person but because again you know with uh, COVID it's the way things need to be right now and then you know, the future, near future, I hope that we're going to be able to go out to deliver face-to-face uh, -face instead of the camera. <laughs> you know, I, I share all the time on the importance of listening, not only with your ears, your eyes, your heart, your spirit. And for me, you know, to utilize that gift to learn and to share is why we're here. You know, to create the Shishika. A few years back, um, you know, we are elders that were here. They taught us and showed us how to, to make the shishika. And, you know, they took us out on the land to harvest the stones. And they taught on how to create and why we use. And I always like to acknowledge them first because, you know, it's so very important as, um, you know, you know, to acknowledge the elders, the knowledge keepers, um, the gifts that they share. Because as they share, you know, for us to, uh, to share for, with the people, none of this is ours to keep. It's not mine to keep what to share and pass on. You know, and just like in our drum video, you know, uh, when a request comes in and we go out to do what we do. There's going to be a day, I know, that these hands aren't going to be able to do what they're able to do now. So for me to do this, it's, it's my passion and it's what I love doing. Because today, you know, our people, you know, yes, it's a, it's a want, but it's also a need because we're going through so much in today's society. You know, the Shijika is, is a very powerful gift that is given to us as Nishinaabe people. And, you know, with different cultures and whatnot, they have similar uh, gifts. But for us, you know, the Shijika, um, it's a healing tool, it's a healing gift that we use in our ceremonies. We use 
them, you know, for doctrine. You know, we use them uh, for a lot of things, uh, for spiritual means. We need direction, we need guidance. Yes, we could do that outside when, uh, when we offer our tobacco and whatnot. But when things happen, you know, sometimes we need a little more. And that's where the Shishi Kong comes in. You know, I, I believe, you know, with the sh uh, stories, teachings and whatnot that we carry, a lot happens when you create. Creating does something to the spirit. Creating touches your, your heart. Your spirit. You know, in our everyday life, sometimes we need a lot more than what we sometimes have. You know, when you look at the teaching of the turtle, because that's what we're going to be working on, we're going to be creating the turtle. Uh, rattle, truth, and everything that the turtle teaches us, you know, the 13 moons, the 28 days around, and whatnot. And we're going to talk about that, and we're going to go through a whole lot more uh, as when we do our Zoom, you know, because that's going to be the opportunity for you uh, to ask questions, to share different things and whatnot. So I just want to share a little bit, uh, you know, about, you know, a little bit on what we're doing and why we're doing this. And at a later time we will um, have that Zoom for use. So we're going to get going here. And if you can turn the camera any a little bit. This is your kit that you're going to be receiving. You know, you have your, your turtle shell. You have your cut piece and it's already punched. You're going to have your two pieces for your uh, your bathroom, your lacing. The stick we went out to cut, you know, I, I've got alder, cherry, willow, and each kit has a different uh, stick for the handle. The handle, you know, I believe that, you know, it's your choice in what you want and uh, what you want to use. Either cedar or whatever you feel comfortable with. A kit isn't complete without, so that's why we put our uh, the sticks. We have our, our our white stones, and we have our leather for your handle and for your, uh, the neck of your rattle. Uh, getting back to you know when the elders took us to uh, harvest these stones. No, it was something that was a beautiful, it was a beautiful experience. And to, to learn what these, I, I call them Thunderbird stones. Because when we have them in our shakers, you know, they light up, they spark, they dance. You know, I hear people say, oh, they're jip, uh, they jip you when you, when you see them and whatnot. And when I hear that, you know, I kind of smile because how do they, they jip you when they acknowledge their, their beauty and their, um, that they're there, they're listening. Now we 
sing, we pray. But sometimes all we need to do is listen. And when we sit the rattle, connection, we listen. As humans, we sometimes get a little stuck up here. We get stuck in the dynamics of everything that is happening out there. And sometimes that's, it's very overwhelming where we struggle and we have a hard time. Like the drum that we, we shared with the, with the people, you know, the process in creating that's where teachings, story, and vision happens. You know, I, I somewhat struggle with this. You know, when I talk about connection, yes, we're connecting through the camera, but it, it's different when you're not. And I know, because I'm learning, that this is the way that it has to be right now. And, you know, for us to go out, it's going to happen soon. So, we're going to get right into um, making your shishi come with your turtle, your turtle shell. It's a, it's a process that, you know, the process, you know, in getting everything ready, cutting out and whatnot, that's where it all starts. And, you know, if we did all that while we're here, we'd be here for a long time. So we kind of fast forward a bit. And maybe through in the Zoom, we can teach and we can show right from the start of cutting and harvesting and whatnot where we are now so you know the tools with your kit when you're at home you're gonna need a good nail and I'm gonna share that why you're gonna need a good pair of scissors and you're gonna need some glue I had a can which I forgot to bring in, it's sitting out there. But at the end, um, that can, I'll share a bowl with that after. So, just like our drum, you know, you want to soak your, your rawhide uh, either the night before or a few hours before. Depending on the thickness of the piece you have, like the piece I have is, is, is pretty thick. So you might want to soak it a little longer. Our shell, they come in different sizes and you know, you're going to see that this is, that looks big, you know, but it fits in there perfect because they're all different sizes and you're going to see in your kits that some are small, some are big and whatnot. So, Whatever you feel comfortable with the stick you have that you're given, or you want to go get your own. So that's how we got our template here, because we had to go with each shell because they were different size. And you put it on your rawhide, and you draw around. But when you go around, you want to leave quarter inch to half inch bigger than the shell. And you're going to see why after, uh, why we need to do that. And as if you can see right here, that it's, that's what it is. Quarter inch to half inch. 
This one here, we pre-punched the holes on the, on the hide, so we can, we don't have to sit here for a long time to, to you know, so you take that off and you want to keep this in the water for a little bit. Like the drum, you have two pieces, you know, you have your, the piece that you're going to be using on the shell. Now you're going to have to get your small piece. Some of them vary. This one is a big piece. Some kids are, have two pieces. Those are big pieces. Some have smaller pieces. The holes that we have. Uh, when you soak it, and when you... Uh, you're going to see that they close in, they shrink. And why we use the nail? I got this here, we call this a mongoose poker. But anyways, as you go around, you're going to have to feed your, to put feed your lace, your back piece that you're going to be cutting. Your lace. It's not going to be like how we made with the drum. I don't know the, the proper term of size. <laughs> but you see, can you see okay? Mm -hmm. That's maybe quarter quarter of a quarter inch and you want to keep that that same diameter right around because the holes are a lot smaller as to you know for example the drum kits so the one piece that you have that you're cutting just like the you know, when we lace our drum, we're going to go round and round and round. You don't cut it uh, in half or nothing. You just keep on going round and round and round. And you see where I'm pulling a little bit. Because it's a little thicker. And it comes out a lot cuts a lot better when you give it a little pull. So when you get corners like this here, where I went around, there's a little point and it's a little thicker. Grab your scissors and you just round that off and you keep it the same size. So you're going to need, I always like to have more than not enough. So tip to tip and half. <laughs> so that's two, one arm length and a half. Just 
keep on going round and round. And you want to give it a little tug, not too, too hard. So I got one. And like I said, it, it's always best to have more than run short. So it's one continuous piece. See, there's my half. There's my one, and my half. So you just want to give that a snip. And you see that you want to cut it like when you thread uh, a needle because it's small as the holes are, you're going to need, you know, uh, something small to put through to, to, to feed it. So just put that in the water for a couple of seconds. And this is where you're going to need your nail. So you're going to get your piece here. That's why you need towel. Whoops, just a pack dry. So you're gonna start on this side. This is the inside, your hole, and you're gonna feed your nail through, and you're gonna just you know go round. So you're going to start and see how fast it closes. So you just make it a little smaller. And you're going to have to put your nail in again. So once you get there, you want to leave about six to eight inches hanging down. So now you came through the front and it's going to go to the next hole and you're going to come behind.
how I came to the front. And you're just gonna weave it back and forth, over, under, over, under. Opposite, come this way. Mm -hmm. Then that's the thing when you when it's wet, you're somewhat trying to. You don't rush or whatnot, but you know it's sometimes it's time because uh, what it teaches you is patience because where you have to fool around on each hole because when it's wet it closes it's it shrinks so you know don't get discouraged and you know don't get frustrated. That's why it's, uh, you know, just like anything that we do before we create and whatnot, it's always best to smudge, you know, to keep the smudge going, you know, get that good mind, that good spirit, that good, that good energy. You know, it's not a race, just like anything that we do, you know, you go with the flow. Because when we start getting that way, then things happen. And you kind of wonder why those things happen. Things ain't working out. Is there a pen or or? <coughs> Let's see that. I might, it's not pointy on the end, but it's thicker. Okay. But there's a pen too, just in case. Yeah. No. I think uh, a thicker nail would have been better. But like I said, this is a real thick piece, so that's okay. <laughs> thinking this morning, you know, that when you, you know, talk about rushing and uh, trying to do things fast, you 
you know, it's just like that story, the tortoise and the rabbit. You know, and you look at the turtle, he doesn't run fast, he doesn't move fast. So, you know, a little teaching right there, patience. Can I see how your lacing is looking? Okay, how it should. I'm just going to put this through. Okay. So when I talked about going over, under, over, under, and you see, can you see that okay, any of it? Yep. And this is the front end. Right. Okay. So you just got to keep on going over, under, over, under. And I, th I think I... is because of the height and the thickness of the hide. So if you have a thick piece of hide, you know, uh, maybe a, a thicker finishing nail or, uh, you know, a four inch spiral nail. And you're not tightening it or anything as you go around. You're just feeding it through. Because we need to keep it slack for when we, after we, we're done uh, weaving it. You know, the, where this came from, you know, uh, I had someone come to me and ask me, Michelle, I'd like to have, uh, I'd like to trade with you. Uh, for a couple of your rattles. The plain one. So I said, sure, I'll trade you. You know? So I went to see this person, and I took them uh, two rattles, because that's what they wanted, and uh, they traded me uh, two turtle shells, small ones. So for about a few years, you know those shells, they sat in the box in the basement at home, not knowing what I was going to do with them or how to do it or whatnot, because I wasn't you know, taught on how to create or whatnot. So one day, I, when I was at work here, you know, I brought them in. And, uh, you know, I was in the office and, you know, I asked for that, uh, that guidance, that direction on, on how to to utilize the shells. So, you know, I, I started cutting my materials and, you know, it came, the first one came together really nice and then the second one came real, real nice again. 
And when I talk about listening with your, not only with your ears, but you know, your heart, your spirit, listen to what, you know, uh, creator, the grandfather's grandmothers, you know, your spirit helpers are, are helping you with. Because from that day, you know, that's where, uh, you know, because you know, learning is something new and creating and utilizing those shells. Because you know, a lot of people they, they have shells and whatnot and don't know how to do it. And, you know, but it's just like me, it really, you know, you take that time to listen. Really listen. Things happen, and it's like that with everything we do. Right, Amy? Exactly. Listening is our only job. <laughs> you know, and it's not a thing of, of you know bragging or any uh, boasting or you know anything like that it's the way it's how we are you know we always talk about that connection connecting with what you create and that's where things happen you know we're in here doing this video and the ladies here are in the other room making skirts, you know, so we're very truly blessed people with what we have, the gifts that we have, the gifts we carry, that we all have. And as you're working this, as thick as this is, See that it's already starting to dry. And that's what you gotta watch. Well, you just pull it out. It's not even a big issue. But you wanna catch it right at the beginning. <laughs> So you said it's starting to dry. Feels like it's drying. It's, yes. What? So, so do we soak it some more? And it, it it's okay to work with uh, to to finish, and then I recommend that you know uh, when you're done lacing, just put it in the water for a couple minutes, just to soften it up and whatnot, because that's where gonna have to uh, somewhat kind of work quick to pull it together. So you know we're using rawhide and I've seen uh, rattles these turtle rattles that were made with the, uh, uh, leather, deer leather, moose leather, and whatnot. And it's, it, it's, it's somewhat the same, same way in making it. But you don't, uh, there's no water involved or, or anything. But for me, as nice as it is, because I utilize uh, this, these rattles in the sweat lodge and whatnot, they get wet and whatnot. Uh, it's okay to, you know, to take them in because they hold the moisture and they hold the, the dampness and whatnot. As to leather, once it gets wet, it hardens and uh, 
it wears out. You know, sometimes it rips, you know, because it's laced some similar to this way. And, uh, you know, I, w I wouldn't recommend uh, taking it just for that reason, because you want it to last a long time. And with rawhide, it'll last a long time. So when you look at how the, the spacing when we, uh, we cut the holes, you know, it's always, I put them about an inch apart. As to the other, this right off here, you know, it's every, I don't know, they're a lot closer. You know, I like the drums, you know. I, we utilize what we have and what we get, you know. And, you know, I, I worked with rattle kits you know, that you get from the stores and whatnot, and, you know, they are convenient when, you, you know, you don't have the time to, to teach or, you know, the time frame, I guess. And, you know, I believe in everything that we do, you know, to do it, learn right from scratch. Right from the beginning of prep time, all the way to when you finish. Because when we go out, you know, it's so very important that when we start together, we work together, and we finish together. You know, it's a very, that there is a very important, uh, teaching there because you know just like in anything we do in life you know you know as kids I always want to be first place I want to try and be the winner and like I said it's not a race you know and when everyone finishes together you know you can't see it here but when you're in a group of people, the smiles, the tears, the, the laughter, everything, you know, and that's what it's, that's what it's all about when we do it together, you know. And everything that uh, we go out and do, you know, rattle, drums, baskets, anything. It's who we are as a people. There, one more. Now you see how it's laced. You know, you go over, under, over, under, and you see how it is on the outside like this, okay? And you see how it's starting to curl up. So now, we see it's always good to have more. And I'm gonna show you 
So you see we have six to eight inches down here. And you just give it a little snip if you want to see. And I'm just going to quickly put this in the water. Just to soften it up a little bit. soaking, you have your shell, and you have your stick. You know, I've seen rattles and whatnot where uh, when you put the stick in, they use screws to hold it in place or, you know, uh, little nails, they tack it in through the shell and, you know, to hold it in place. But after time, time what's going to happen the screw in wood wears out so when we have our stick we have uh, whatever in fits in better because this is very important now. You know, you look at this, this stick, okay, as to this stick for this, uh, this package, this kit is different. You see how it curves and whatnot, and this one curves. You have little knot here, and you have different uh, things on the on the sides here. And that's what when we create nothing is the same. Just like you and I, we're not the same. We're all very unique in our own very special way. So when you put it in your shell, you're gonna see it's got a pretty big opening here. And it's going to be a little bigger on that one. So you want to get your your stick. And for me, I like to push it right through to the other end. Because if we leave it here and we we screw it, okay. See what will happen after time. You know, start going like this. Okay. So I like to put it right at the other end like this. You see already how solid it is and it's not even glued or anything. Okay. So whatever you feel comfortable with. Right here. You know, some of, this, some of your handles are going to be bigger, some are going to be smaller. You know, we made sure that every kit, it went through. So you're going to see that it has a little, a little uh, space in between the shells with the handle. When I talked about getting one, one end, finger to this finger and half that's where that small half comes in where you're going to put that in to hold that in place okay 
So, you're going to get your small piece, leftover piece. Then all you're going to do, just make a couple more. But I'm not going to put it on yet. We're going to go here first. And with your glue, your white carpenter's glue, you're going to want to just do the top here like this, right around. And that's what's going to hold it in place right at the, the, the front. You're going to slide that in. there. So you're going to give it that time to dry a little bit, but we're going to get this on first. You're going to put it underneath your handle and the shelf. Then you're going to use, make a knot. Then you're going to use your nail and you're just going to slide it under, under the shell just like this. Can you see that okay Annie? Mm -hmm. Slide that under like that. And we have the same thing in the back. That way we don't have that screw. And after time it's gonna wiggle go wobble. So you cut this off right here. Here. So once you get that all in, put some glue right around. Do that right around uh, the edge of the, the piece of uh, rawhide you put there. Even though it's wet, it's okay because it's going to dry. There's going to be a dry process after uh, you're done. There. piece here that you raised. And you just pat dry it. Good side on the outside. You wanted the rough side on the inside. So what you're gonna do Put it, spread it out on the table. Then you want to place it. Now you're going to pull it up, and that's why it's so important to use a nail. Okay, to pull it up, and you're going to do that right around. And you see now why we make it that much bigger over the shell. Because 
we just want to cover the bottom, the bottom of it. So you start off like that and you're going to fool around to make it as tight as you want. And you're going to do it right to the end. And you're going to So before you tighten it, this is a very critical thing here, where your stones, this is the time to put in your stones. I have always used 13 stones. The 13 stones would signify the 13 moons in in our, our Nishnabi calendar. People like to use more. People like to use different. We give people option to either use BBs, beans, corn. But for me, this is what I was taught, so this is what I use. And you just want to Feed them in. Whatever you feel comfortable with, you know, we're giving you we're giving you stones. You choose to use them, use them. You want to get some other different kinds. Because that's this is your creation. But that's why I use 13. The significance of 13 to our people. Okay, so now. There's a couple on that are not inside. So now you got that side tight. You're going to do the same thing this way. See how it's coming along on the top? I'm going to do that. And sometimes it might take a uh, couple of things to go around but once you start tightening it it starts holding into place and you just go around another time overlap the whole thing on the outside like this. So you got it tight like that, okay? So you go in the middle here and you keep on doing that. That's why it's good to have the nail and pull it up. Can you see that okay in here? 
Where's my hand on the way right now? Right now it's on the way, but... <coughs> So you're making sure your rawhide and your lacing is on the top side yes. of the turtle yes. shell. Yes, just like that. See how it is? So, you know, I'm happy the way it is because it's right over. So now you have these two ends, okay? So you keep this one straight down. Then you want to grab this. And tighten. Pull it tight. And then this one's going to come this way. That's all you need is just a few granny knots just to hold it in place because when it dries it's going to shrink and tighten right up. There. So now you have a couple pieces of leather. You know, this is totally up to you on if you want to do, do it th this way. If you want to have a handle, you know, uh, as to the dowels that we use for, you know, uh, we used to use for our drumsticks. And they're, they're real slippery and they go, sometimes they get smiling or whatnot. So I like, I like having a handle. Because you're not, you're not losing them or whatnot. Okay? So, with this one, I'm gonna make one. So, all you do is that piece, you, you got a square, triangle, whatever way, cut it even. The same way we cut in our lace? In the same way we cut, but you wanna make it a little more thicker, but round and round. And use the whole piece. So like on the lace, just make this even, take this off. But if you want to make fringe or whatnot, it's totally up to you. You know. That's the, um, the good thing about creating is that you have all these different things that happen where... Where's my plate now? So, right here the neck, I like to add the lace around the neck of the... You see how it's over here, it covers uh, this part of the the rawhide and it covers the the batish, the knot of the batish. And it gives it's it gives it a little more security. 
And then I talked about the screw and not having a screw and uh, when you have the glue uh, holding everything and when it dries, when everything dries, it's going to be one solid piece. So with your, I'm going to do that with this one here. So I'm going to start it right here. As you go along, just add the glue on your, your leather and just pull it tight. Some people, they like to go all the way down. I'm not going to. I'm going to stop it right here. There. Then you're going to do the same for the handle if you want to make it So, and that's it. You know, uh, because this is your creation, you know, uh, there's no right way. Well, there is a right way, but there's never a wrong way in what we do. Because when you have that good heart, that good spirit, there's no, no wrong that can happen. And this is yours. Sometimes people, you know, I don't know, either be jealousy or, you know, uh, because they want to have what you have and whatnot, you know what, it's not theirs. This is yours. So, embrace and cherish what you created and, you know, a lot of good will come up, uh, it's going to come from it. You know, like our drums. There's a ceremony that has to take place, feasting. I think. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> There's flashing zero minutes at me now. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Okay. We killed it? Might have. It still says it's recording. But now it's like zero minutes it's flashing at. Oh no. We're still going, I guess. I okay. So, like I was saying, the feasting has to happen, the birthing ceremony has to happen. You know, like the drums, you know, or anything that we, we want to bring into the circle for the first time to bring that spirit alive, the spirit of that, that 